All right. So with the shutter release in place, next we need to put the main lever on the shutter. So a, a white of molybdenum around the inner and outer surfaces. And you don't need much. And on the bird pool, that's this thing here, a bit on there, and a bit on that little guide post at the tail end of it, is all that's required. Now I'll lower this into place. Swing the levers back out of the way so they're clear. Pull the spring over its post. Sometimes easier said than done. That's it. Check that everything's in place. Everything's tucked in where it should be. And I can put the speed cameraing in place. Before I do that I'll wipe around the centre with some molybdenum. I'll run around the cam surfaces where it picks up the pin on the retard gear train. And here is where the high speed spring is under tension at that point there so I'm making sure I've got some lubricant on that. I can lower this speed ring in place make sure that the B lever here is drops back into its slot freely. Now the shutter is assembled it should work that's at the B position should work shutter opens closes as soon as I release the shutter release Let's try it round at about the tenth of a second position. That sounds good. At the twenty-fifth, that's noticeably faster. That sounds very good. I'll check those on my shutter tester, but they sound very good to me. I'll carry on closing this up now. Put the front plate in place, line up the lock screw with the little cut out. Turn that into position. There you go. Run smoothly, even on the one second position, it's quite good. So the shutter, there was nothing broken in the shutter. The shutter failed to function because it needed to be serviced. And specifically, it needed to have oils and greases removed from where they shouldn't be, and any dust and grit washed out. So I've put my aperture pointer back on there. It's interesting on the shutter that this scale ring here has got quite a gold tint to it. I think that's actually just the nickel plating and for one reason or another it's more yellow than usual. Um, nickel being more yellow than the chrome anyway. But uh, that just stands out a little bit more than it would normally do. I've cleaned up my lens set. So the front component simply screws in at the front of the shutter. Just done up tight with your fingers. You don't need to go crazy. The rear component 
the same deal. Just done up with your fingers. You don't need to use a tool. There's the shutter. Back later. There was just some Tilly Marketeer. I do get sick of that sort of thing. Right, the shutter is all ready and finished and ready to go back in the body. There's three paper shims. On this shutter there is a location pin on the shutter close to the center so the cutout for those shims needs to take into account that locator pin. Alright, time to fit the shutter. It's sitting in place. Hold that firmly between my fingers and drop the retainer ring in from the back. Or we'll place the retainer ring in from the back would be a better idea. If I find the right tool. Just done it up very lightly with my fingers. I want to check the action of the shutter. So I've cocked the shutter. It's set to a 25th of a second. I'll roll the sprocket with my thumb until the advance locks and I press the shutter, the shutter releases the film, rele uh, as the film is released the film advance mechanism releases to allow me to wind on again cock the shutter again now I can feel that that releases the film advance mechanism before we get to the point where the shutter releases by a considerable margin. That means I want to make an adjustment. The easiest way to make the adjustment is to adjust the arm, not the arm on the shutter, but the link on the camera body here to effectively shorten it so it pulls the shutter down or releases the shutter earlier. So I'll remove the shutter and make an adjustment to that uh, arm now. I could do it with the shutter in place but it's much much easier to do it with the shutter removed. You have better access. And all I'm going to be doing is reshaping that arm slightly. I'll zoom you back in. This piece here I want to reshape slightly so it pulls down the shutter release on the shutter itself slightly earlier in the stroke. So I'll get a pair of pliers to do that. Alright, we'll see if I have had any success. Drop that into place. 
I'm just going to hold it in place with my fingers at this point. I'm not going to uh, fit the retaining ring yet. Cock the shutter, revolve the sprocket wheel until it's reached the cocked position. And I can tell that that's still released the film uh, advance mechanism before it got to the shutter. You hear the click. That's the film re release. That's the shutter firing. So there's still a fair bit of distance between those two settings. So a little bit more adjustment is called for, I think. Now my uh, metal shim there just came off, fell off. I don't want that to happen because it makes life awkward trying to line things up. That's better. I'll cock the shutter. Roll my sprocket shaft. That was very good. I couldn't tell it any dis difference here. I didn't hear two clicks. Let me try again. No, they, those actions happened at the same time. I only heard a single click. Let's try. Your film does release Film mechanism does release first, that's fine, that's good, but it's only a very slight difference in timing. Okay, I've just done that up loosely. Check that everything moves smoothly. Check my release again. Now that sounds good. Well, I'll tighten that up now, the retaining ring, and I can, I'm effectively finished after that. The job is done. So, apart from a final wipe over, apart from a final wipe over, this is done. So that was my Retina 2. Oh, I better do the leather on this one, I suppose. I haven't blackened that yet, have I? Need some polish. This was the Retina 2 that was had the very damaged leather on the front section here. Was missing the release button from the front and uh, otherwise didn't work very well. It also, the rear lens element, as you might remember, was white and cloudy, and it was just a deposit on the surface. I've got no idea what it really was. In a similar fashion, the taking lens had quite a uh, pronounced deposit on the front surface there too, which took a great deal of cleaning to see the back of. Again, I've got no idea what that was. Well, here's what I'm going to use to uh, clean that leather up. Wapru Renovating Polish. It's very full of pigment. It's very black.
it's sufficient. Now I'll just buff it off. Make sure I don't leave black polish on the bright alloy edges. And there we have it, nice and clean, the leather's all been restored back to a, a good state, everything's nice and free, focus moved smoothly, range find has been adjusted correctly, shutter's all working correctly, lens, everything's done. So that now can... Uh, probably go on my swap page this one I think I'll have a look at my collection if this is better than the one I've got in my current collection perhaps I'll keep it instead so there we have it a nice Kodak Retina 2 type 011 thanks for watching alright so here we have the 010, the Retina 1, and the Retina 2, the 011, all serviced and ready to go. So that's what happens to parts and repair cameras um, when I've got a bit of spare time on my hands. They hardly ever get turned into spare parts. They just tend to deplete my spare parts stock and end up getting serviced and uh, go back out into the world as often as not. I'm undecided whether I'll keep these or offer them for sale yet. Thanks for watching.